All right, we're ready. We're gonna go up a couple of notches here on the, uh, on the scale today for what we're gonna be cooking. But before we get into that, I wanna take care of a little business. Uh, I really appreciate all the great response that we've gotten so far on Fend For Yourselves and uh, keep them coming. Keep your comments coming if they're complimentary. If they're negative or you got something critical to say uh, and you comment that, you're gonna be banned. Banned from the audience forever, so. Uh, and I thought it'd be fun to take this time to read a letter, a uh, question from one of our viewers. So I'll do that. Okay, that was fun. I love reading. I love reading the messages from the viewers. Now, you've also asked about when you'll be able to win one of my t-shirts. Well, I thought before we start giving them away, I would show you, this is uh, one of my t-shirts. Can you see that? These, this is one that I wear lounging about the house and I've you know, kind of worn this one in a little bit, but I mean, if you want to win it, then maybe you know, we'll give a few away sometime. Okay, so here we are, uh, just as Jesse would say to Mr. White, on Breaking Bad, let's cook. All right, today I'm really giving you the keys to the kingdom because I'm gonna show you how I make sausage milk gravy. So we're gonna do biscuits and gravy, Southern style, some people call it white gravy. Some people call it sausage gravy. I call it milk gravy because you use milk to make it, all right? That's why it's white. All right, so let's get started. I've already got my pan heated here. It's heated almost too much because I was waiting on the camera to get ready. So it's hot and I've taken a, a roll of breakfast sausage. Okay, use any brand you want. This is Jimmy Dean. It's what I grew up with, so that's what it is. Uh, and I've broken it up already because it's kind of hard to break up as you go along. So you dump it in, get it with my nice cookware here, which is a paper plate. Oh yeah, and I got my, my favorite browning, meat browning spatula there. So you just cook it, get it brown and, and separate it into little pieces because that's what's gonna go back in the gravy when we get the gravy made. So this may take a minute. How are you today, Lainey? I am great. Thank you so much for having me today. It is my pleasure having you as the first guest on Fend For Yourselves. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Makes me so proud that I can drink with my daughter. <laughs> Okay, so you're gonna do the mixing, Lainey. Oh goodness, okay. But I'm not gonna call you a mixologist because we all know that's just some over-dramatization of a barking. So you got ice, right? You need ice. And two ounces of the fireball. So it's two, two ounces this of the fireball? This is top? two ounces. Okay. This is, the big part is an ounce and the, I mean the small part's an ounce and the big part is two ounces. So two ounces. But if you want to go more than two ounces, you can. It's fireball. It's not going, you know, it's not going to ruin the taste of it. Now you want to put that in here on top of the ice. Okay. <gasps> but we're not done. No, we're not. Now what you're going to add to that is a good cream soda. Ooh. Yeah. The oh, way I need a bottle opener. Ooh. No, I don't. I'm just that strong. <clears throat> Look at that. Whoa. Now you're going to stir. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. And there it is. Wow. There is a cocktail made with fireball and cream soda. Do you want to taste it? Sure. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Might I have a taste? Yes, of course. Oh, she is your daughter. Mmm. Mm. Smacking good. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Fireball and cream soda. <laughs> That's the name of it. Lainey, thank you so much. <laughs> Give daddy a hug. Aww. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, Daddy loves you, darling. Oh. Daddy loves you. I love you. Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> All right. All right, so you see you get it in little pieces just until it's not pink anymore. And you do it over, say, a medium-high heat. Medium-high. All right, so when you get it brown, you're going to brown it down when you do that. All right, you see, there's no more pink in it because we're going to cook it a little bit more when we put it back into the gravy. You'll see how that works. You got a, an expensive draining plate there and you just put it out onto the paper towel on the paper plate. You can do it like this if you want, it doesn't matter. Just get it in there so that grease can soak out of it. I try to scoop it out because then that, you actually pour less of the grease onto the onto the paper towel. And then I get a I get a piece of bread and sop up that grease out of there and eat it. I don't, but it would be good. <laughs> it would be good if you did. I know I look like I do. I look like I live on grease, but I don't do that. Get out on this side. All right. First step. Done. Sausage is cooked. We're going to put that aside. But we're going to come back to it in a few minutes. Okay, a lot of you are thinking right now, what is that? Why is he doing it in that? You're supposed to make gravy in a skillet. I like making it in this. It's not as deep as a pot, but it's also not as flat as a skillet. And you'll find out why when we get closer to the end. And uh, you just have to trust me. If you don't, then leave. We're all in this together if you can't trust me. Now, here's where you got to do. When you're making gravy, people get intimidated by it, but the only thing that you need to be is patient. You got to be patient. So don't try to rush it. Now, that's a quarter cup of vegetable oil. And we're going to make a roux. Oh my gosh, he's making a roux. What's a roux? And I've heard roux are hard to make. All roux is is a thickening agent. Okay? So that's a quarter cup of oil and a quarter cup of flour after you have gotten your oil heated up and all. I cheated right there, but you can get it heated uh, before you start this process. But I can go ahead and do it now. So all you're doing is you're cooking the flour. So you, we're making a what's called a blonde roux here. And you're just going to cook it for a little while till you get it to a little bit of a brown phase okay not much because you don't you know you don't look at milk gravy and or white gravy and then see that it's got brown stuff in it it's supposed to be white the brown stuff you see in it is the sausage all right so uh, this is a non-stick vessel so you're not supposed to use metal on it because it scratches off the non-stick stuff so that's why I got a wooden spoon and you can see this one is beaten to hell and back because it's my favorite wooden spoon. It's my favorite gravy making spoon. I'm telling you, you have to stir this constantly. You can't walk away from this. You can't, you know, if you're a guy, you can't look up and watch a few plays on the game while you're doing this. You got to stand over it. You got to tell everybody, look, when I'm doing this part, I'm going to be unavailable because I can't let this scorch and I can't let it stick. Okay. I mean, it looks delicious as it is right now. Actually, it doesn't. I'm being sarcasm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there are also going to be a lot of people criticizing the rest of this that I do. But that's again, that's for people who already know how to cook, which if you already know how to cook, all right, glad to have you. But we're teaching people who would think that you would never be able to make homemade white gravy that you can. And now we're going to be uh, eating this for dinner tonight. Now, if you start to get it, because breakfast food's great for dinner. If you start to get it where it looks like it's getting, you know, too brown or it's cooking too much and you get freaked out, you can turn the fire down. <laughs> That's what people do. 
they lower the heat. And you see, I'm gonna stop stirring for a second and let you see what happens, how fast it'll, it'll bubble up on you like this, okay? See, it's starting to bubble all over because it's cooking. You don't want to let it cook too much. They'd be like, why you spood upside down? Because that's the way, the way I like to do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, here's what happened. I got ahead of myself, in all honesty. I got ahead of myself and I started this process before I had all of my ingredients out here that I need. So, I hate to ask you this, um, Mr. Todd, the camera guy, can you look in the fridge there and get me uh, the milk out of there? The milk? Because it's called milk gravy because you put milk in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so we're getting close. Thank you. Oh, and he opened it too with his big strong muscles. Now, do not, do not go trying to use any other kind of milk other than whole vitamin d milk whole milk i know you health nut people trying to cut a calorie here or there if you come in with my gravy using almond milk or some you know new age crap like that you'll really be banned and you won't have any friends the friends that you try to feed that to are going to unfriend you in real life not just on social media so don't be using almond milk or cashew milk or oat milk or skim milk, none of that. This is what you want. Now, how much of that are we gonna put? Hmm, I guess we'll just have to see. So this is your thickening agent. Now, once you pour the milk in there, it's gonna start getting to a uh, a uh, solid state kind of like a you're gonna see it come together as what a gravy would look like okay and here we go just start with a little ease it in there keep stirring now you may want to turn the fire down a little bit because this is a slow process you got to be easy with it if you need to pick it up off the fire completely and let it catch up all right so you see how thick that got right now, is that the consistency of gravy we need? <laughs> no. Mm -mm. So we're going to even take it off the fire right here for a second. And then we're going to add some more milk. Let's add a bunch of milk this time. Just get all incorporated in there. Splashing it everywhere. But be careful, you don't want to add too much milk, right? You don't want to get it runny. So... When you got a, you're using a thickening agent like this and then the liquid that you put with it, look at that, it's, you think it's gonna be lumpy, but I'll show you how to fix it if it does turn out to be lumpy. But I think we're gonna be okay. So the way you can tell when you're using a thickening agent as to the, whether it's the consistency you want is when it comes to a boil, okay? It's the thickest it's gonna be when it comes to a boil. So you see, this isn't boiling right now. So when I bring it up and it starts to boil, it'll thicken some more and I'll probably have to add more milk to it. Okay, let's bring the fire up a little bit. Get it back going here. Stirring constantly. You can't walk away from it. Don't walk away. Don't be a walk away, Joe. Stir it and stir it. Now, one of the good things about cooking is, is if you're cooking for people, like say you got some friends over and stuff, and uh, they get on your nerves, you're always just, you got an excuse not to be talking to them because you're cooking. Which, I mean, there's only a few friends that we have that are, that I would put into that category, which would be all of them. And family. And anybody else. It's not that I'm not a people person. I just don't like people. It's all right though, I mean, some people like people. I don't, <laughs> I'm kidding. I like some people, the ones who don't talk or 
ask me for anything or want to call me. Everybody else I'm cool with. All right, so you see it's smoothing out now. You see that flowers cooking in there. It's looking good. It smells good. What was that James Brown, Godfather of Soul, say? Because I look good. I smell good. I make love good. That's not really fitting here. I don't know why I was going to say that. All right, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit on the heat. Cause I'm on, I want it to, I want it to go ahead and get to a boiling point kind of, and I don't mean a rolling boil. I mean, you know, like we talked about in, uh, episode one with the chili, I just want it to bubble up. That's what I want. And you see, I have not stopped stirring this, nor will I. Ooh. Oh, never mind. That was, it was a line of something in there, like the, the, the flower or something made a line. It looked like a hair. <laughs> like I had a, because I'm going. Where is that long hair coming from? Not coming from me. What kind of long hair person been up in my gravy? Okay, I'm bringing it up, and it does. I mean, it takes a while, and that's why I said in the beginning, you got to be patient. But it's easy to be patient. All you got to do is stand here and stir. I mean, come on. Don't be intimidated by it or be, don't be intimidated by me. I know I'm an intimidating figure. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm like Schwarzenegger in them. You know, I can tend, tend to be a little intimidated. See, look how smooth that's getting now. Look at that. Yum. Now I'm going to be honest with you. If you tasted this right now, it would, it would taste like crap. You'd be like, eh. but you season it once you get it done. Don't season as you go along with this gravy. Maybe somebody else cooks gravy that way. I don't. See, look at that. Mm -hmm. Looking like cream of wheat now. I know what cream of wheat is. I'm trying to suck in while I'm sitting here doing it. But it's not going to matter though. Somebody said in one of the comments, they asked the question, TJ, why do you not taste your food when you're finished cooking it. Why does Mr. Todd do it? And I say, because there's a rule that fat people are not supposed to eat on camera. It's not a good, it's not a good look. Why well, do you think politicians never eat on, on camera in front of people when they're out at these cafes and stuff, getting all folksy, asking people for votes and acting like they're of the people. All right, so you see it's coming up. That right there, if we stopped right here, that would be the thickness of the gravy. Okay. But I don't know if that's the way I want it. You'd be like, well, that looks fine right there. But for me, I'm going to add a little to it because I want to teach you how to fix it. If you get too much milk in it and make your gravy too runny. All right, so here we go. I'm going to add some more. We're just going to keep working it in there, working it in there. Mm-hmm. Work that gravy. Work the gravy. Work the gravy. Work. Work it, work it. Fat people are also not supposed to dance on camera. Whew. I mean, this, this just stirring here is, I mean, it got me swole. I mean... <laughs> Me and Mr. Todd are swole mates today. Swole mates. Because he got on an extra medium t shirt. You'll see that. You'll see that when he goes to taste it. Taste tester Todd. He put on his daughter's t shirt this morning. <laughs> She's like, Daddy, where's my t shirt? I'm wearing it, baby. <laughs> Thought it was mine. Oh my God. Okay. Now, does that look like the consistency of a good gravy? Maybe. Maybe so. Looking good, huh? Doesn't that look like gravy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is that too runny for gravy? It's a little bit too runny. 
But I'm gonna go ahead and dump our sausage back in it and see if that thickens it up any. Yummy, look at that, mmm. All right, so let's stir the sausage into it. That gonna thicken it up. Mm-hmm. Oh no, that looks too good. Is that what we want? Yes, this is the consistency you probably want your gravy. However, hold on to yourselves because I am about to mess it up on purpose. Yep. See that? It's a good consistently consistency. Let's make it too runny. Whoop, there it goes. Oh my god, I've ruined it. Now it just looks like just looks like milk in a pot with some maybe rabbit pellets in it. <laughs> that sounds mm -hmm. good. Yes, yeah, delicious looking. All right. Well, how are we gonna fix that? Well, we're gonna put some more milk in it. Is that gonna thicken it up? No, that's gonna make it runnier. So what to do, what to do? Cause it's easy when you don't get it thick enough, you can always add two, but how do you take away? Here's the trick. Here I have one quarter cup of water. And here I have two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna put that in there and then I'm going to stir it all up. What are you doing? It's making a paste of some sort. Stirring it all up. You see how nasty that looks? Mm-hmm, looks like a school project or something, kindergarten. All right, what are we gonna do with this runny gravy? Oh no! I'm gonna turn the fire up on it for a second because we gotta bring it back to a boil. This is a thickening agent itself. And you're not gonna taste this, but I'm gonna show you how to use it in case you get your gravy too runny and it'll thicken it right back up, okay? And you can do this with any, any type of dish that you're cooking that has uh, thickening in it. If you want it creamier, you want it thicker, all you gotta do, two tablespoons of cornstarch in one quarter cup of water. All right, look, it's starting to bubble up again. See, bringing it, what they call that is bringing it back up to temperature. I don't know why they call it that, because even a low fire and a simmer is temperature. Dumb, but that's what they say. Bring it to temperature. Now it's still not thick, so we're gonna start working some of this in here. Pour it in, like that, and then stir. Stir it, stir it, stir it. Oh, I can already feel tension on that spoon. It's like sticking it so much just from that little bit. Look at that. That's as thick as it's gonna get because it's boiling. Do we need to put a little more, just a tad more? And then we're gonna bring it down on the heat to a simmer and keep stirring till, it's, till it calms down. Now look at that. Isn't that good? Isn't that cool? What other instructional kitchen video is gonna show you how to mess something up and then fix it? See, I don't have an ego like a lot of these chefs do. And people say, where did you train? Where are you? I say, I'm not a chef. And you know how you can tell that? Because I don't have any tattoos. All chefs have tattoos. I don't care who they are. They all have them. That's how you can tell. All right, so that's thick. Look at this. Look at that. Thick, thick, perfect size, perfect consistency of gravy. Now, I'm going to tell you, it still tastes like crap. That right there tastes like crap. So here's what we're gonna do. It's time to season it. It's gonna season it up and you're gonna be ready to go. All right. We're gonna start with, yes, the salt. Don't start by putting a whole lot of salt, but you're probably gonna need a whole lot of salt. But we're gonna taste it as we go because I don't have a fix for getting too much salt in it. 
I don't have that fix. Some people say you put a potato in it and it would draw the salt out, but I'm not doing that. And then just some old fashioned black pepper, you know, sprinkle that in it. Mm-hmm. And then, I like mine with a little bit of spice to it. So, since I'm cooking something and it's not a dessert, it has to have Tony Sacheries or any type of Creole seasoning in it. Just a little bit, just a little on top. You may not even want this part. You may be a, a wimp, can't handle it. No, I'm kidding, you may just not like spiciness. Okay, now we're gonna incorporate all that in there and we got to taste it. Now watch this. When I go in for the first one with the clean spoon, I'm just gonna go in and get it, all right? That's gonna be hot. Don't video me eating. Woo! That is good. Woo! Coming to your papa. Oh my goodness. You know what? I usually have to go back in and add salt and all that, but I, got, I think it's perfect. Let me taste it one more time. All right, now here I got a dirty spoon. Don't have my COVID mouth on it. So here's what I'm gonna do. Take this spoon and dump it onto that spoon so I don't have to put it back in the gravy. All right? Blow. Get the hell out of here. Mm. Now it's done. We can go relax. Well, first of all, now I get the rest of this whole milk to do what I want to with, which I don't get in the house ever. We drink that skim water milk. But now I get some whole milk left over. Finish clog clogging up my arteries. But we have to get taste tester Todd in his position to taste this. We're gonna put it on a biscuit. Hey, it's TJ and uh, I'm about to do something that I absolutely love, which is enjoy a delicious brunch. Now, not just any brunch, a brunch right here at one of my favorite restaurants in the world. It's called Mia Michi and it's on Morrison Plantation in Mooresville, North Carolina in the Jet Fitness Plaza. I mean, I got the perfect eggs and sausage and bacon and pancake. Now look at what Jody got. She got the avocado toast. You order a bowl, you order it and it comes in a beautiful bowl like that. I've had a Bloody Mary, a mimosa, a pancake, sausage, bacon, eggs. I knew somebody was gonna have to roll me out of here because the Miyamichi brunch is so delicious. And I'm gonna go home now and get back in the bed because I've eaten so much. I love you, I love you all, but I got to go. Okay, uh, you can't have biscuits and gravy with just the gravy, you gotta have the biscuits. So, I have already prepared these biscuits. Now you say, you're cheating, that's not real biscuits, that's a canned biscuit. It absolutely is, and you know why? I promise you I'm not just making this up. I prefer canned biscuits to homemade biscuits because I like a softer texture of bread product. If you want to get in there and start cutting lard into flour and making your own biscuits, be my guest. But I don't. I don't like them enough to go through all that trouble. If you want to go somewhere like your favorite chicken place and order, you know, a dozen biscuits, plain or whatever, do that if you want to. I just prefer, uh, these are actually the Pillsbury Homestyle Grands biscuits. And I'm not going to lie, I got busy setting up everything for the show and I got them a little bit too brown. But that's all right. Now you're gonna take them like this. And I like, I like to stack them like that, like it's an art project. Now the wooden spoon is not a good thing for sc scooping out gravy. It's not deep enough. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna get this gravy. I'm gonna get up in it like this. It's a shame to actually eat this gravy because it's so perfect. And then I'm just gonna layer, ladle it over like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
Oop, I almost, <laughs> almost dumped it. I'm trying to get, I forgot there was a camera up here and I'm trying to show the camera. All right, so now what you could do with this, what I really like to do for Christmas morning, I do this, but before I put the gravy on the biscuit, I put eggs on each side, then cover it with gravy, then cover it with cheese. But it's not Christmas, so we're not doing that today. Mr. Todd is just gonna come. Oh, I'm sorry, he's going from Mr. Todd uh, cameraman to Mr. Todd taste tester, taste tester Todd. So <coughs> coming in here, show him your daughter's t-shirt. Look, <laughs> look at it. No, don't pull it away from you. Look at that. Ooh, Stop. tight t-shirt. Oh. About to hunker down on some biscuits and gravy. Whew, I'm hot up in here. Damn. It's hot, in it? No, it's good. It's not hot. I mean, it's hot, but it's not too hot. No, it's not hot, but it's too hot. I'm talking about hot heat hot. No, that's good. Mm-hmm. That is really it's good. It's not too spicy for you mm -hmm. and your delicate mm -hmm. palate? Mm-mm. Okay. No, absolutely not. All right, so there you go. That's the keys to the kingdom. I've never shown anybody else how to make the milk gravy before. So remember, you can do these things. You just have to be patient and, you know, block out some time for it. Another tip is... Always get your ingredients out and measured and ready to go in it as you go. Uh, because when you have to stop cooking and measure out a tablespoon of something and this, that, and the other, just go ahead and prepare everything so you can just get it going in whatever the dish is. It's the only thing in my life that I'm organized with is getting ingredients ready for whatever I'm cooking. Thanks for watching. Fend for yourselves. I really appreciate it. Remember, send comments, send pictures of your food that you cook. Well, if you're cooking my recipes, don't, I don't want to see <laughs> I mean, you don't have a show for a reason. I don't want to see your stuff. But send them, send them to us of what you're cooking of mine. And remember, no negative comments, only compliments. And uh, otherwise, you'll be banned. All right? I love you. I love you all, but I got to go.